Hello everyone, this is Al Kabir, the analyst, and today I will be talking the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, the Philadelphia Eagles have the potential of being the best offensive line in the NFL. Not just the NFC East, not just the NFC, but the NFL. This is Al Kabir, the analyst. Um, PFF came out with a grading of the guards. We have Isaac Salamalo, 22, I believe. Uh, and we had Brandon Brooks, number eight. So they still consider him a top 10 guard in this league. I feel as though when I look at Isaac Salamalo, because I thought he was ranked too high. So I went back and watched some of his games. I'm like, he's not that bad. He's not that bad. And um, salute to Jalen. I know he... Bees on Gate City Sports uh, comments a lot, uh, Philly Fresh and things like that. And I like his knowledge of the offensive line. During my five hour stream with Gate City, you know, I said something like, I believe Salamalo is below average. What he said in the comments was, is that we take Salamalo for granted. And it made me, I'm like, you know what? He knows the offensive line pretty good. So I went back and watched him. I'm like, we do. We take them for granted. If I'm not mistaken, when I look at the line, you know, we like to get Driscoll and those guys a lot of credit. But Salamalu last year, he played at a high level. He played at a pretty high level. Um, so when you look at it, we get spoiled with the Jason Kelsey's, who's who was a pro bowler. We get spoiled with the Lane Johnson's, even Jason Peters back in his good old days, right? So we look at Salamalu as why he not up there with those guys. We talking about possible Hall of Famer guys or Hall of Famer guys. Can I say Brandon Brooks, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, uh, Jason Peters is Hall of Famers? Absolutely. So Isaac Salamalu seen, you know, below them. And, and that's no knock on him. We talking about guys who who bring it guys who is top tier in this league not just the eagles in this league so we consider him the weak weak link sort of say but he's number 22 according to pro football focus and if you go back and watch games of him he plays pretty good obviously he got some things he needs to work on but if brandon brooks can stay healthy if lane johnson can stay healthy Jordan Mulatto still play at a high level, which I believe this season, I'm going out on a limb. I think Jordan Mulatto is going to be considered a top 10 tackle in this league. They're going to consider him that. So if you have Lane Johnson playing at a high level, man, and, and according to Howie and according to me, everything starts from the trenches. So if you could get those guys playing at an elite level that... Um, all springs to Jalen Hurts, all springs to Miles Sanders that gets your receivers time to get open, that has your tight ends playing at a high level. The only reason why our offensive line was bad last year is the injuries. Jack Driscoll go down, Lane Johnson go down. Now we just picking anybody like good Jamon Brown, right? So if these dudes can stay healthy, I'm telling you, that offensive line. That defensive line, it can be something. And also, by the way, us not being Atlanta, um, I was talking some BS. We will be Atlanta week one. Julio Jones will be out of there. Um, I seen on NFL rumors by next week. So he's going to be out of Atlanta. All we got to really worry about is Calvin Ridley. Once again, it's the cornerback too. A big concern. Absolutely. Absolutely and go back to the offensive line. Brandon Brooks talking spicy, too. He he wants smoke, man. I mean, insert that clip for y'all. Yeah. What's up? Wanted to, uh, we were talking to Lane last week, uh, and he was talking about the two of you coming back from your injuries, and I just wanted to uh, read a quick quote from him. He said, we're in a spot where we have a lot to prove. When you get, when you get into your 30s, that's when the doubt creeps in. That's when a lot of guys hit the end of the road. I feel a sense of urgency for the both of us to go out there and really prove ourselves. Um, your reaction to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, me, you know, me and Lane, 
within ourselves, I mean, there is no doubt. Um, I think it's just more of like the outside, right? So, you know, for example, um, you know, basically I've had back-to-back -back Achilles tears. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be 32 this year, you know, things like that. But I think the biggest thing that everybody's forgetting is I've tore my Achilles before. And when I came back, I was the best, period. So with that being said, like, what tells you would be any different this time? And that's exactly how I feel. Um, as far as proving ourselves, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you can, there can be a debate, like, you know, proving if you're going to be healthy, proving if you can, uh, you know, make it through 17 games now, you know, things like that. But as far as proving yourself, I mean, what haven't we done? But that, that's the question. Like, what, what haven't we accomplished? So there is no, you know, doubt or, hey, we're in our 30s, uh, you know, coming off injury, you know, we don't know if we can do it. We've done it. So, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine. Like, yeah, he, he wants smoke. Like, he like, look, man, I came off a, a torn Achilles. I've been doubted before. And what I do, I come back stronger. I believe Isaac Salamalu, he's going to bring his game up to another level. I think Jason Kelsey wants to leave this game at a high level. Jordan Malata, he's going to play at a high level. What we're going to do with Andre Dillard, I'm not sure. But Jordan Malata should be starting week one. He should be starting week one. Um, We like to talk about physical specimens when it comes to running backs and wide receivers. Jordan Malata is a physical specimen. The man that that dude is huge huge super pause by the way but that dude is huge man but man jordan malata man lane johnson on those guys all that's gonna do is help Miles sanders get his thousand yard rushing to me he still gotta hold on the ball a bit the drops and the fumbles were concerned to me last season but that line can be like what I predicted. I'm not saying Super Bowl contenders. I won't go on, go out on that limb or go out on that hill. I don't think we have enough talent for that. But playoff contenders, I can see it happening. I can see it happening. I'm not just speaking with my heart right now. I'm speaking with logic because if the line stays healthy, who can see us? Who can see us? I know Washington got a good defensive line. I know New York has a good defensive line. Who doesn't get a lot of recognition? And um, Dallas, they, they got a little kinks, but they do got a good linebacking core. So I believe right now we can be the best team in the NFC East um, because, once again, start from the trenches. And I don't see an offensive line on the Giants, Washington, or Cowboys whose offensive line is better than ours if healthy. Those teams will be lucky to have Isaac Salamalu. And we got him on our team and he, he's possibly the worst starting guard we have and he plays at a high level. And then if you even go to our bench with Nate Herbick and those guys who will possibly be on the bench, uh, Jack Driscoll, Andre Dillard, who, who needs to step it up, by the way, for being a first-round pick. But Andre Dillard, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I really don't see offensive line that's better than ours. But what do you think and how do you feel, man? How do you feel about this team? I believe we can have the best offensive line in the NFL. I really do. I really do. But this is Al Kabir, the analyst. Ghosts.